I'm convinced that the American church has arrived at a significant moment of truth. We are only 75, 80 years removed from three separate regimes that killed 60 to 70 million people intentionally. The parallels with where the American church is now to where the German church stood in the face of the Nazi regime are unavoidable and grim. Churches need to understand really what Marxism is, which is to destroy the church, to destroy the word of God. So if you capture the seminaries, you capture the pastors, you capture the laity, you capture the soul of the world. Christianity is not just about saying Jesus loves you and then going to heaven one day, but that there's a war that's raging. The church is weakening, which is why Marxism is ascendant in America today. This is the hour of the American church. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our prayer time tonight. And uh, what a great week we are in. Holy week. The great I am is with us to help us and to be whoever we need him to be. As you just saw on the uh, commercial there, don't miss this great film. I believe it is so important. Uh, that is on, on Sunday afternoon, five o'clock, five o'clock. And uh, so be a part of that and be praying that this word gets out all over the United States. I believe it is a word for our times. Now, of course, this is Resurrection Sunday coming up, Easter uh, coming up. My brother Dutch will be with us. I'm looking forward to that. He will be giving the message that morning and we have other things planned. And I know many of you will be in your home churches as you should be, uh, but you can look at it later uh, online. But I believe that this is going to be a special Sunday, not just here, but all over the United States and our world. And uh, we're going to be praying about that in just a few moments. Also remember May the 3rd, and that is a Friday night at seven o'clock, is our next Ecclesia Hub meeting. And that will be with Hank Kuhneman. He will be preaching the word that night and ministering the prophetic word of the Lord. Uh, Apostle uh, Prophet Hank, he's one of the leading prophetic voices in our nation right now and well, even parts of the world, but he's hearing the heart of the Lord and we must hear what Holy Spirit is saying. And so on that Friday night, we will gather, we will worship the Lord and encourage you to come from around the uh, region and hear this great man of God tell us what he is hearing uh, from Holy Spirit. We are in a very critical time in our nation as I know that you, you know. So be praying for a download of revelation and enlightenment and wisdom and preaching and teaching as uh, Prophet Hank comes to share. Again, that's May 3, Friday night only, seven o'clock. Our, our prayer focus the last couple of months is very, very much in the news right now. We've been praying for rivers, dams, bridges, reservoirs, and infrastructures to be protected from terrorism attacks. And we've asked you, and thousands of you have done that, thank you. But we've asked that you go to uh, reservoirs, dams, uh, electric grids, and pray for protection there because uh, there has been a high alert from our FBI and more than that from Holy Spirit to pray for protection there. 
And uh, we've been going and praying Psalms 91 at these sites. And again, so many of you have done that. I'm not going to take the time tonight to uh, read some of the testimonies of what has been accomplished there. But obviously in the news right now, we have seen an example of the vulnerability of our nation's infrastructure. Yesterday, sadly, a a container ship hit the Francis Scott Key Bridge and it collapsed. Uh, This happened near uh, uh, Annapolis, Maryland, where a lot of our Navy is represented. It's the port of Baltimore and the port of Baltimore is now shut down as a result of this bridge collapse. We're told this is going to cost billions of dollars and some are saying it's more likely going to be a trillion dollars or so. Uh, This includes lost revenue, jobs of those that worked there, and a supply chain shortage to uh, to the whole nation from groceries, especially cars are shipped from there. It's the number one port for uh, cars. And so the supply chain is now disrupted. And so we need to pray about that, that wisdom will come of how to get all of this done. But uh, the ramifications of this collapse are enormous and uh, they're just now really being tallied but it's going to be felt for years, they are telling us. Well, we need to pray for wisdom to our, for our leaders to get this all accomplished and get us back on track the way that it should be. Also, and I'm sure many of you are following this, but uh, six people have lost their lives and there is now a recovery operation going on. So tonight, we're going to be praying for those families. And we're going to be praying for Baltimore. It's a part of our assignment. And we're going to pray for God's comfort to come and pray for the officials there tonight. Uh, We are told that preliminary investigation is that this was not a uh, a terrorist attack or that there's not evidence of that. And hopefully that remains true. But it doesn't stop our effort in what Holy Spirit has told us to do for the last couple of months. There are two quick points that I will make. First of all, uh, and these points are points as a result of this, this collapse and our prayer effort. But one, uh, the first point would be our leaders have lied to us so much that now we are hearing from all around the nation, can we really believe what we are being told? The mistrust from all the lying has has caused many people to mistrust whether the information that we're receiving is really valid. And that is also something that is very sad. I never thought that we would be this way in our nation that we mistrust our leaders this much. But the character of the upper levels of our government are, it's revealing that we cannot trust them. And millions of American people are at that point. Do we really trust? Because when you trust, you can't really serve with passion. And this becomes very dangerous. And it's got to change. It's why we must be involved in the coming elections. We have to pray. We have to pray for change and leaders that we can trust. I read something that was rather sobering to me from a Vietnam veteran. His quote was this, I once was willing to lay down my life for America's laws and government. And now I find I must lay down my life for my grandkids to protect them from some of America's laws and government. 
This is revealing what mistrust can cause. We have the opportunity to change this and we have the responsibility to pray. And we're going to do that. The second point I will make very quickly is it reveals that indeed we are vulnerable. Bridges, dams, infrastructure, electric grids. Think of how easy this, this was to do. Could not terrorists do this or more on purpose? If an accident can cause this kind of damage, what could terrorists do on purpose? And our FBI has told us that it's not, it's not if, it's when. We're at the highest alerts. And so, yes, we must pray for mercy. We must pray for protection because it is also revealing that very, very bad leadership has welcomed into our nation those that want to harm us. And we've got to pray. They, we, we have over 200,000 Godaways, and some of them we know are ISIS members. We saw what happened in Russia. So we must take very seriously what Holy Spirit is saying to us. And pray for protection and pray for change. We will. The sons of Issachar were those that discerned the times. So must we. We're responsible to discern the times. And this bridge collapse, I believe, is a sign. It is a warning. And it's prophesying America... You are vulnerable. You have allowed corruptive and evil agendas and lost your focus. Your leaders have turned towards greed, lust, lust of the flesh, lawlessness, and they are blind. They're not paying attention. America, wake up. We must awaken this nation to its covenant roots. We must awaken it to righteousness. We must, the church must rise and see awakening, reformation, revival. Obviously, the Holy Spirit has, has warned us so that we can do something about it. What can we do? The greatest thing possible. Pray, talk to God about it. Continue to be his watchman. And so I invite you tonight to pray with me concerning these concerns and also pray from your heart what Holy Spirit is talking to you about. And then we're going to pray for this weekend and the reason for our celebration, the resurrection of King Jesus. We're going to pray. I'm going to invite you to pray for your church. Pray for the churches. And let's believe for an awesome weekend and an awakening to come to our nation. Lord, tonight we pray for the families that have lost loved ones in Maryland in this bridge collapse. Lord, the tragedy is clear and only you can give comfort. We ask that you would do so. We ask that you would be close to these families the wives, the husbands, the kids, the families, Lord, that need your divine comfort. And we ask God that for the leaders there in Baltimore and Baltimore itself that is under the stress of this situation, we ask for Baltimore that your mercy would be extended there and that you would give wisdom to the mayor and to the city leaders and the governor that, that they would make the right decisions and be able to make them very, very quickly and uh, that there, there come an evident and very clear divine intervention into this situation. Lord, help us to turn to you in this time. 
help help Baltimore um, and this whole uh, Maryland region. Help it to turn to you and help our nation turn to you. We ask God in Jesus' name that mercy be extended. We pray for the thousands there that are now uh, without jobs or their jobs is postponed or uh, they can't work for a while and and we need wisdom for that to rebuild and uh, give other options. We pray, God, for wisdom there. And so, Lord, we also pray for the infrastructure. It is very clear that our adversaries could do harm, but we're appealing to you. We're asking you for supernatural intervention that you have promised and we are aware that sadly, while there was loss of life this time, it was not as bad as it could have been. Thank you for your mercy there also. But Lord, we know that we need protection. Protect us from terrorism's attacks. Reveal what ISIS is planning or any other gangs or any other uh, organizations that are planning of evil. Protect our borders. And uh, we would pray, God, that you would give our leaders the wisdom and the boldness to make a stand and stop this, the sex trafficking that continues, and the infiltration of drugs. And, and uh, it's, it's something that our leaders are turning a blind eye to and we're asking you to give us new leaders to change this so that we are a people that are protected. We are under covenant with you and we are experiencing a constitution that is based upon you and followed, followed in such a ways that are representative of you in your kingdom. Give us leaders that have that kind of a heart. And so, Lord, in light of this tragedy, we're calling on you. We've seen you do it time after time in our nation, but also throughout history. Turn our hearts towards you at this time and show us that you are the God of all comfort. Lord, we pray that this coming Sunday morning that your anointing will be present in churches all over the world. We pray for local congregations that are preparing now to celebrate what you came to do. And that is to free all who ask from their sins. Let this be one of those resurrection Sundays when the resurrection life of our King is shown to the world in Churches on the corner, churches downtown, churches that are regional, everywhere. Thousands and thousands of them would pray for the pastors preparing their messages now. That there would be a sense of understanding and wisdom to, to relay the message of the gospel of the cross all, uh, to all who are there. We pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be palpable. Pour out your spirit, Lord, on these congregations. May this be a true resurrection Sunday. And breathe life again into our peoples. Breathe life into awakening. We pray for the, the, the praise teams that they will lead our congregations in worship. And that, that God, our children's churches and children's ministries, Sunday schools, uh, would represent you well and minister what this is all about to our children. May the harvest, may the harvest be great. We pray, God, for churches of all sizes, uh, whether there's a thousand there, ten thousand there, or ten. May the resurrecting life of Jesus be evident. King Jesus, I am, be, I am everywhere. May it be evident. 
Speak to those that are backsliders to come home. Speak to the prodigals, come home. Speak to those that have never made their decision concerning what what you provided through Calvary. Holy Spirit, convict, lovingly draw people to repentance. May this be a week, uh, a Sunday, when all over the planet, the gospel goes forth uncompromised, we pray in Jesus' name. And Lord, we would finish this evening with praise. How can we thank you enough? We thank you for coming and laying down your life. We thank you for bearing our sin, paying the price. I thank you for paying the price for me. We thank you, Lord, for the covenant that's established in your blood, spirit, soul, and body. Thank you for freedom from sin. Thank you for healing by the stripes of upon your back, emotional healing. Lord, you sweat blood. A covenant was made to release us from depression, fear, emotional traumas. Do that, Lord, we pray. We thank you. We thank you that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We thank you for freedom, Lord, spirit, soul, and body. And we declare... Yes, we thank you for being King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you for being whatever we need you to be. And we thank you for intervening intervening in our nation. Now, our decrees. This is from the first angel book. There are 300 decrees in the back. Here's our decrees. Come, Holy Spirit, empower the gospel of the kingdom this Sunday in tangible ways. Let your power be seen in churches all over the world. We decree, come, angel armies, and open doors for the gospel to prevail. We pray even in these next uh, few days, angels, Prepare for this great weekend. We decree angels who are sent to facilitate the gospel of salvation through Jesus be loosed. We declare angels be sent to assist us to scatter and shatter all demonic blockades. We decree in Jesus' name all doors, channels, paths, roads, highways, and byways be opened in Jesus' name. We decree Holy Spirit will guide, he'll provide, and he will empower the churches of King Jesus around this world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying with me tonight. I do appreciate it. Keep praying for our nation right now and keep praying for uh, this great Sunday that's coming up. And uh, wherever you go to church, be blessed. Just be blessed and enjoy the presence of King Jesus. Amen. Bless you.